Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about security on your home server. Specifically, what I wanna talk about is securing your SSH setup. Now, by default, SSH runs on port 22, and hopefully by now you've changed that to be something else. But if not, we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. We're also gonna show how to add a honeypot or a tar pit to your server to just kind of uh, mess with people who may try to gain access to your SSH server. So uh, with all that being said, let's jump over to my desktop and get right into this. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. We can see that this is a Linux server container here uh, and it's called Endless SSH or Endless H or I, I don't know, but, but it, it's an SSH thing that makes it endless. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a moment. Uh, basically, like I said, this is uh, put together by Linux server. Um, at least this particular container is. So right here it says endless SSH is an SSH tar pit that very, very slowly sends an endless random SSH banner. It keeps your SSH clients locked up for hours or even days at a time. The, pers the purpose is to put your real SSH server on another port and then let the script kitties get stuck in this tar pit instead of bothering a real server. So um, this is super easy to set up. So let's just go ahead and uh, we'll scroll down a little bit. Uh, so what I did want to mention here is that this is good for uh, desktop or uh, Raspberry Pi setups. Either one of those will work. And then if we just scroll down a little further, uh, right here is the uh, the Docker Compose uh, that we're going to use uh, for this setup. So very, very uh, easy thing to do here. But before we do all of that, what we we'll wanna do is actually jump over and change our port 22 uh, setup for SSH. So in this case, I'm using Open Media Vault. Uh, and if I scroll down, uh, down the left column over here, um, right there it says SSH. And by default, like I said, it's on port 22. So I'm just gonna make that 2234, uh, just because that's easy for me to remember. And I'll click save, and then I'll come up here, and then I'll click apply. Uh, hopefully there it is. Uh, and we'll give that a second to do its thing. Now look here, again, I'm in Open Media Vault, so that was a very simple process. Uh, each different uh, setup that, that, that's gonna be out there is going to have a different process to do that. So you will wanna look up the process to change your SSH port from 22 to something else. And then at that point, once you've done that, uh, then you can go ahead and follow along. So now we've got our SSH port changed from 22 to 2234. I would be a bit more random about, about those numbers uh, rather than just tacking on a couple more, but uh, this is what we're gonna use for right now for the sake of. Of this video. So uh, next thing we want to do uh, is come over to Portainer. Uh, here we've got, I'm in business edition, so it's going to look a little different than yours. Um, but if I come over here to stacks um, and you can see that I've got some other stuff in here, but what I want to do is add a stack and then I'm just going to copy and paste this in. Uh, this is more or less the same thing um, that, uh, that we had over here. Uh, there were just a few things that I changed. Um, and so you, I also, you can see I gave it a name up here. Uh, but basically we've got a version 2.1 uh, Docker Compose. Our service is gonna be this endless SSH. Our image is gonna be from Linux server. Uh, the container name will be endless SSH. Uh, our environmental variables, uh, we've got a PUID and PGID. Uh, you will wanna make sure that, you, darn it. You will wanna make sure that you set those appropriately. Uh, in order to get those, what you'll wanna do is uh, come over and open up PuTTY. Uh, I'm just gonna type in Mighty Mouse. Oops, like so. And I'm just gonna make that 2234 and I'll click open. And I'll drag this up here and I'm gonna log in as root. Okay, so now I'm logged in. Now, what we wanna do here uh, is actually get the ID of your admin account. Now this is, in my case, this is the admin account for, uh, for my Open Media Vault setup. Um, so uh, I log in as admin. So I'm gonna type in ID space admin and hit enter. So we can see my UID or PUID is 998 and my GID or uh, PGID is 100. Now, if I was gonna do this on say my Synology device, I would type in ID space, whatever my username is to log into that device. And those would come up with different numbers, but that's how you get your PUID and PGID uh, for uh, this particular instance. So below that, we've got uh, um, our time zone. I'm close to Denver, so that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, this millisecond delay, that's how often it should send uh, a banner uh, on, on, on this container. 
Uh, basically, the banner is kind of the communication that happens uh, before any any uh, any kind of transaction happens. Uh, basically, the server just sends a banner so that uh, the SSH client can recognize it, but uh, it never goes past uh, that to put in any credentials or do anything at that point. So uh, this originally was set to 10,000, like so, that's 10 seconds. Uh, but what I did was I changed it to five. Uh, max lines, 32, uh, max clients, uh, is 4,096. That's how many, uh, basically how many people can try to get in. Basically what happens at that point is anything past that 490 or 4096, they get put in a waiting room. Uh, so, so again, that's just something to keep in mind there. Log file, originally that was set to false. Uh, I set that to true. I want to see what's going on. Um, and then below that I've mapped a volume, uh, for the config. Uh, they say that's optional. I don't agree with that, but okay. Uh, below that, of course, we're going to run this on port 22. Uh, that's that's what we want people to hit is port 22. That's where we're going to capture them and make it basically impossible for them to do anything. And then their internal port is 2222. Don't change that. It'll break things. Uh, and then, of course, below that, restart unless stopped. Awesome setting there. So once we've got that, um, we can just scroll down and click on deploy the stack. Uh, this will actually deploy very, very quickly, actually. Uh, if we come down and see if I can find it here. Linux, and it's this one. Oh, this one doesn't give me much information. Oh, there we go. It's 25 megs. Uh, so it's a very, very small, oops. Oh, that's, that's the same one. So it's a very small, it's 25 megs on either of those. Uh, and it looks like it, for some reason it actually downloaded all kinds of stuff there. Um, lots of endless SSH, SSH stuff there. Um, so I would, I would encourage you to find uh, the tag specific to your, uh, to your client. Um, so basically you would want to come up here and add, uh, let's go to tags here. Um, so basically it would be, uh, you know, this, you would add that, uh, just this version a five, nine. Uh, there's also a latest tag that you could add, uh, to your, to your, uh, thing up here. So you could do like latest, uh, otherwise you run the risk of, uh, it, it possibly downloading multiple instances of these, just something to be aware of. Uh, but basically, like I said, it's 25 megs, so not a huge deal this time. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take that off of there since I've already downloaded everything I need. Oops. And then I'll go ahead and click on deploy the stack. <clears throat> so that's it. Like, that, that deployed really that fast. Uh, so I, I come over here. Uh, we can see logs, starting services. Uh, services are done. So we're good to go at that point. We can see that this is running on port 22. Uh, so we should be good to go there. If I click that, of course, nothing will happen. So basically what we want to do now, uh, what I like to do in this case, oops, is actually come over to here. I'm going to do CD and then I'll do uh, SRV slash configs slash uh, endless SSH. Uh, and then I'll look into here and I'll uh, CD into logs. Oops. Uh, and we'll do another list and we'll do a CD endless. And then right here, we've got uh, some different uh, things that we can look at. Uh, what I want to open up is uh, I'm going to do nano current and here you can see these are previous logs that I had set up. Uh, this happened, um, well, ju just recently, actually, just a few seconds ago, it looks like. So once we've got that, let's go ahead and just, uh, let's exit. Let's control C or control X, I guess. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to open up a couple of different things. The first thing I wanna do is actually come back over to Portainer here, and I wanna open up uh, the stats. And I'm gonna set this to one second instead of five seconds, just so we get some more real-time data here. Uh, the CPU you can see is doing nothing, uh, which is good. This is what we wanna see here. Uh, then if I come down and I open up another PuTTY instance, uh, like so, and uh, then I type in uh, Mighty Mouse again, and hit enter, hopefully. So here we can see um, that nothing is happening here. Uh, it's, it's literally not doing anything. Uh, I can't, I can't, like there's literally, like I can't do control X, I can't do control C on my keyboards. None of this is ha uh, helping at all. Uh, but what you can see in the background, you can see these little spikes. Uh, each one of these spikes, that was the initial connect, and each one of these is a banner that it's sending in order to kind of keep it trapped in this loop. Uh, so, so basically at this point, what we can do is come back over. Uh, we'll take a look at our uh, endless, SS endless SSH logs again. And right here we can see 10.04, uh, which was just this minute. Uh, you can actually see some good information here as far as uh, when they tried to connect, uh, you know, uh, time, date, um, uh, the host, 
uh, was this is this is the computer that I'm on right now. So you can actually keep tabs on who is trying to access your server based on their IP. Uh, now, chances are uh, you'll only get an internal IP address, but if it's an internal IP address you don't recognize, then you can go take a look at your uh, you know, your, your router, your modem, whatever, uh, and find that IP address and ban it to keep them from doing whatever they're doing. I would also encourage you to see if you can find the MAC address and ban that MAC address uh, just as an extra precautionary measure. There's a good chance they might use a MAC address spoofer, but uh, you can at least get that device off your network entirely. Um, so basically that's it. Like that's, that's how this works. Again, like I can't, I can't do anything in here. Uh, nothing, nothing I do down here works. Uh, if I exit this and say yes, uh, then I can come back over here and minimize that. And here you can see, um, we'll get one last little little spike there, and then we shouldn't get any more. Uh, well, maybe, maybe that maybe that was the logout point there. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so now we can see uh, at that point, now we're not getting any more spikes because now it's not sending any more of those headers to communicate with the SSH uh, program that's attached to port 22 that shouldn't be. So that's basically it, guys. That's just one of those things that you can do. I, I encourage you to change to port 20 or change port 22 for your SSH to something else anyway, just as an added security uh, measure. But uh, if you wanna have a little fun and you wanna, you wanna make sure that people uh, get kind of bogged down slowed down uh, and, and maybe a little confused as to, as to why they're not getting any kind of error message. Uh, this is a great way to do it. It's super easy to set up. It's a 25 meg download. So uh, hopefully hopefully you liked this video and found it helpful. Maybe this is something that you'll implement. If you do plan on implementing this, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know uh, how many people actually uh, want to do this for, the, for their own setup. Oh, also everything will be linked in the description down below so you can jump over and, and grab this, do what you need to do with it and deploy it on your system. Of course, while you're down there, there are links on different ways you can support the channel. Uh, those are always down there in the description anytime you want to do that. Um, I also want to give a big shout out to my to my channel member. Uh, I say member, There's I think there's one guy right now that's a channel member, thanks to him. Also, uh, my, my patrons, uh, thanks to you guys. You guys are amazing as well uh, for the constant support month after month after month. Very much appreciated. Um, but again, I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.